Good morning. I'm Rev. Karen Gigax Rodriguez. I'm the pastor of the Federated Church of Green Lake in Green Lake, Wisconsin. And it is an honor to welcome you to this time of worship for Sunday, October 13th. We are in the middle of a series called Do Unto Others. And we are taking this uh, very seriously, this responsibility of what does it mean to be the church in times such as these? Do we have something to say in the midst of all that is happening in our world? And yes, of course we do. With everything that's going on, with the hurricanes that have been so devastating over these past few weeks, the wars going on in the world, the deep divides and polarization that we feel in our country as we're entering an election season. All of these things are swirling around us, but we find our identity in our citizenship of heaven and on earth. And so what do we do with that citizenship and how do we practice it? How do we exercise it? So we've been looking at um, those components that you just saw on your screen, kindness and compassion these past two weeks. And today we're going to look at humility, that we are all creatures of the earth and that God is our God and we are not. And what does that mean when we um, come together Maybe not in common ground or in, accord, in agreement always, but for our common good. And I'm so grateful today to welcome one of our very own who has grown up in our church, who has definitely sensed a call of God's spirit upon his heart, Kurt Kaufman who this semester finishes his final semester in seminary and who will soon be ordained and will honor his ordination council at our church and will move towards the uh, uh, beautiful act of ordaining Kurt into the Christian ministry. And I'm so grateful for Kurt's witness. So as an introduction to him, if you don't know him, or as a reaffirmation, if you do, Um, I've asked Kurt to share this sermon today on the uh, idea of humility. And so uh, from his work now in the First Baptist Church of Denver on staff there, and I believe he's still filling in as their lead pastor right now, also going to seminary, um, we welcome Kurt Kaufman to our worship service this morning and thank him for his message for us today. As always, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're able to chat with us, and we would love for that chat conversation to happen at our YouTube premiere. And so um, please feel free to um, chat with one another, affirming uh, gratitude that we have for today, sharing any prayer requests we might have, and also any commentary or any thoughts we have during the sermon or during the service. We're always welcoming those. So blessings to you all. Thank you again. I'm Reverend Karen Gigax Rodriguez, and today we welcome Kurt Kaufman, our own seminarian. As we begin today, I'd like us to begin with this threshold moment where we cross the threshold into a worship and sacred time. And as we do this, um, we calm our minds, we open our hearts, and we become fully present to those thin places within and without where we will encounter God's Spirit. And as an offering of prayer um, and crossing of this moment, I offer this prayer and this brief um, guitar reflection that I'll share after the prayer as we enter into the sacred space of worship together. So would you pray with me? God of mercy, We ask you to come mighty close, for we are a divided world, and we are not sure of our footing in this moment. Steady us and invite us to do unto others in ways that build up your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the center that holds, and in the power of the Spirit that transforms. Amen.
Thank you to Peter for that beautiful moment of reflection and guitar meditation. So as we affirm what we're grateful for this morning, I wonder what things you are grateful for and what you would bring to the worship service. And I'm going to start with something that's obvious, and that is my affirmation for Kurt and Kurt's work and Kurt's willingness to be with us. We have been mightily blessed by people who have come through our church and who have gone on into the ministry. And um, how wonderful it is that we are able to help launch the Spirit's work in young people's lives. And so grateful for Kurt today. I'm also grateful for Peter, who um, came with his guitar instructor from Spain and offered a concert this past week at our church, and it was just amazing. So I'm so grateful for that, and I am grateful that we get to share in beautiful music together. And I am grateful for this series. I am grateful for the gift of it. I'm grateful for the banner that is outside the church that is showing our community that we are sincere and intent on practicing kindness and compassion and humility and respect and love in this season. And that, that's what we want to offer to our um, community as a church presence. So I wonder what you're grateful for this morning. Mine were maybe bigger things, but you can be grateful for the smallest of things. Um, and we'd love to know what they are. We'd love for you to put them in our chat area and share them with one another. Um, and as we do that, I invite us to share together in this affirmation of gratitude, which says, Lord, you are an abundant giver. There is nothing that I have that you have not given me. The way of your kingdom is the way of generosity. Help us to honor you with our resources. Free us from the deceit of riches. Lead us on the path of generosity. For your glory, Lord. For the abundance of our own lives. And for the sake of others. Amen. And this morning, we have these prayer reflections and requests that I'd like to share. And I'd ask that if you have any requests, you'd also put them into our chat area this morning so that we can hold them in prayer with you. Um, the absolute devastation from all that hurricanes have done to our southeastern states. We pray for everyone affected. We pray for everyone who um, is going to have to rebuild. We pray for all of the service people who are going to help. We pray for all the compassion and kindness that has been showered upon people even stronger than the hurricane forces themselves. Um, later in our um, service I'll just remind us that we always have the opportunity to give. And through the churches, what's so wonderful about our denominations is that 100% of what we give goes directly to hurricane relief, if that's how we label it. So, um, But we want to pray for everyone and everything affected by these hurricanes. Um, Beverly, who is recovering from brain surgery and who is receiving cancer therapy, we want to pray for her. We want to pray for Judy, who continues to um, be vulnerable because of a bone marrow transplant. So we want to pray for protection for her from any illness, and we want to pray for um, her recovery from that. For Bill, who continues to recover with a long-standing illness, for Peggy, who recently had surgery and who is recovering. For Andrea, one of our beloved 90-year-old people from our Zoom book study who is um, at assisted care living facility at the moment and is recovering after a slight stroke. For Carrie, who has requested prayers for herself and prayers for her son, Andrew. For our continued work with kindness and compassion and humility as we add that work into um, the understanding of what we carry into the week as God's people and God's servants. For relationships, for their health, 
for forgiveness in relationships and for what it takes to become mature and to transform in relationships. For anyone with mental health afflictions, may you know that we care and that we walk with you. For our country, of course, in this time, and for our world in this time. And whatever other prayer requests that you bring this morning, we hold those before God. And I invite you now to join with me in a moment of prayer, and we'll follow that by our Lord's Prayer. So will you please pray with me? Most Holy God, as we gather here today, we do remember that we are people of the earth. Our bodies are perishable, made of the things of earth and life here. And we are humbled by this. And may we, God, first confess any ways in which we have seen ourselves superior to any other human being formed of the same substance of which we are formed, because we are not. And help us, Lord, as we pray this morning to be humble. Because we know that in and through your scriptures you have shared with us that it is from this stance of humbleness, of coming down into the world in its suffering and in its places of need and joining with kindness and compassion with those in that sense of humbleness, Lord, that we are able to be used by your Holy Spirit to do the miraculous work of transformation, the miraculous work of healing, the miraculous work of being people of your love. Lord, help us to remember that it's not um, that we all agree, that we even share a commonality on the ground in which we stand, but that we are committed to the common good, as Kurt will share with us in just a little bit. Lord, bless us as your people. Hear our prayers this morning. Be with those for whom we have already prayed and be with those who have shared in our chat area today. Lord, help the people who have been devastated in any way by these natural disasters and hurricanes. Help them to know that they are being supported and held Help them to know how to take one step after the other to work towards the rebuilding of their lives and help compassion and generosity to overflow into their lives so that they may not be set back for very long, but that they may be able to see the path forward and be able to know how to rebuild. Lord, for all of our loved ones and for our world, we pray for protection from war and we pray for protection from disease and we pray for protection in any way where there are mental health afflictions. And we ask that you would hear our prayers. And Lord, together we share in a prayer that Jesus prayed continuously and taught us as his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'd like to welcome Kurt Kaufman as he shares with us our morning scripture reading and as he shares with us our sermon for this morning. Welcome, Kurt. Good morning, good afternoon, good day, friends. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us Rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Kurt Kaufman, and you may remember me from such federated eras like that time we finally installed a permanent screen. It was a good day. (laughs) 
in 2017, I moved out here to Denver and am now currently serving on staff at the First Baptist Church of Denver, as well as being finally in my final term of seminary. It is a joy to be with you, and especially a joy to be with you in the midst of such an important series, Do Unto Others. Friends, I light this lamp here next to me in recognition that Christ is the center light in our lives. And that no matter where we are, in Green Lake, in Ripon, here in Denver, on YouTube, that we are all connected and bound together by the light of Christ that is shown on each of our hearts. We have been bound together since the moment that we first met and truly even before that. We are bound in love, dear friends. And so I light this candle today in recognition of that love, that it is present and that it is center in our lives, that Christ is the center light of our lives. And so friends, today's scripture reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. It reads, I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to walk in a manner that is worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
So Federated, again, it is a joy to be with you and to be in this space with you today, this vulnerable space in this series that you are in. It is a joy to be home, truly. It is even more of a joy to be here as I prepare for ordination, a process that began at this point ugh, many years ago, uh, behind the controls of your worship slides. This is a process that you have accompanied me through both implicitly and explicitly, and have always thought that I was destined for this. As you expected, here I am. And I am grateful that through your kindness, your compassion, your respect, your love, your grace, and your humility, you acknowledge that I too am human at so many points in my life, just like you. And you gave me a place and a name that to this day I wear with pride. I cannot tell you how much of a joy and an honor it was to be with you and to be a part of the congregation that hosted the installation of our denomination's new general secretary. Truly, the world got to know who the Federated Church is, and you showed them well. You are an enigma. We are an enigma. We are an enigma that models for the rest of our broader faith community that there truly is more that we can do together than we can apart. And we've been doing it successfully for over 75 years. I told a lot more people about you this week as I prepared to come here. And everyone that I described you to was dumbfounded as to how such a thing would be possible. Three denominations, three congregations, functioning entirely as one, and doing so in a functional and healthy way. It is truly an enigma. One person I told your story to was Ken, First Baptist property manager. He reminded me of a story that happened at first many years ago in which two congregations joined ours due to a myriad of circumstances, not the least of these being that the other two lacked a building. As these congregations merged, they attempted to each keep their own identity, take their own offerings, and administratively function entirely separately from one another. It failed. It hurt. Ken observed and wrote during this absolute shipwreck that and I quote, three minuses do not make a plus. A harsh observation, but an observation that was accurate about the situation all the same. To this day, nothing remains of this failed attempt other than signs in our basement that I sigh at every time I see them. But here, at the Federated Church, three pluses did in fact make another plus. Three distinct congregations, each with their own set of bells, all somehow mutually came to the conclusion that there was more that you could do together than you can apart. In a small town that had an even smaller number of Protestant believers. So many people ask me, what is different about you and what it is that allows you to function? It's humility. It's humility. It is a humility that has been baked into your identity since the very day you met on this hill. It is a humility that recognizes that neither of you may have the answers, but that each of you have a role in coming up with the answer. It is a humility that it recognizes that each of us, no matter our denominational identity, are children of the one true God and made in that God's image. It is a humility that recognizes that we each can have different missional emphases, but we can still come together and worship. It is a humility that in today's world just simply does not make sense, except in the fact that it's good. 
Your humility, just like Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus, is challenging. You know, humility is often equated with a lack of self-respect. This was the case frequently in Greek writings, and I feel is the case today. When not seen as a virtue that demands respect, humility is seen as being something that can be taken advantage of. When that's not the case, humility is seen as being complicit or as not having a voice. Humility is a virtue that our politics have chosen to see not as a strength but as a weakness. Humility, it seems, has expired. But you, Federated, have chosen to return to the topic even though it has made up your identity since your establishment. This is because you have observed, rightly, that the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace is maintained, not attained. It is not gained, but maintained. That the work to be the beloved community did not end when you met on that hill. It began. And now, in this critical junction of time, you have recognized that you can model Christ for others through kindness, compassion, respect, love, and of course, humility. You have recognized that you have the opportunity right now to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and that you have some work to do. To help us with that work, Paul points us back to our calling. Not the calling of our job, not the calling that we have discovered through the path of life, not the calling that we believe we have yet to achieve. This calling is not an earthly calling, but is a calling that is of God and God alone. It is our original call, simply to follow God's will. Well, the discernment of God's will is a perpetual effort that, just like humility, is maintained and not attained. What we can say about God's will is that we are to submit wholly to it. We are to submit to the fact that we are human and God is not, and that there is nothing that we can do to change that. We are a people that come from the same place and are made up of the same things. We come from the ground, from dust, and to that dust we, of course, shall each return. We are each a living, breathing miracle, no doubt, but that miracle effect is lost on such a large group of miracles. We are each a set of electrical signals and wires held together by this strange fleshy shell that is mostly made up of water. We are humans. We are humans. We are all weird by the sheer existence, by our sheer nature. Humility is rooted in that same ground that we come from as humans. Literally, their roots are shared, the Latin humus, which means on the ground. Humility is a word that is directed downward. It is a word that has a taste, a smell, a vibe, earth, dirt. It is rich in minerals and nutrients that allow all of creation to flourish. It is a soil that is ripe to produce fruit, not to starve it of its life or its identity. It is what we come from and where we are directed, and in that sense, it is not beneath us. Humility is where we should stand and where we should start, not where we should end. All of humanity is rooted in humility, and all of both is rooted firmly in the ground, the same physical ground that all of us share. While we share the literal ground, we do not share common ground. 
You have to set out on this series intentionally to remind you of where you came and where you each should be in light of the upcoming inevitable divide that we will all feel in some way this fall. Although you were formed out of humility, you recognize that it is work that remains unfinished. Work that requires an occasional refresher course. How humble of you. And so, dear friends, today, radically accept who you each are. You are each humans, not Republican or Democrat, not anything else, humans. Created and formed out of the ground that we each stand on and in the image of a God that is beyond the definitions of anything that we have here on this ground. You are a human. And your one calling in your one body that was once baptized in the one hope of the one God, the one Lord, the one that is above all, through all, and in all, is to simply be that human. Walking in a manner that is worthy of being called human. This calling, while we each have received it, is one that sets all of humanity apart from everything else. It is a calling with a high status and a high responsibility, one that is reserved only for nobility. It is an honor to be called a human, and here's why. It allows us to be wrong. It allows us to not have all the answers. It allows us to not be God. It allows us to not be the God which allows us the grace to not have to judge. If we are not God, dear friends, then what power and what role do we have to judge and what power and what role do we have to condemn others? What right do we have to believe that we are correct, to believe that we have the answer, to believe that everything is black and white as some people make it out to be? If we are not God and if we are all human, what right do we have to look at anyone else as less than human? You are not God, and that is a good thing. It allows you to be wrong and allows for that to be all right. It allows for you not to live up to all we should be every once in a while. It allows you to just be human and to be yourself instead. And so, dear friends, take that right for what it is. That at the end of the day, you and me and everyone else on this planet are nothing more than humans. And that is something we all share in common. May that help us each to find the common good that we each have in spite of not sharing any common ground. And may that enable us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. May this be so. Amen.
As we conclude worship today, I want to thank Kurt for his wonderful work with us. And I have just these few announcements to share with us. Saturday school is happening every Saturday at 930. We are so grateful for our little ones. If you have any little ones in your life and would like them to participate, please don't hesitate to bring them. Our fall book study continues on Thursday evenings. We continue to welcome new people into the group if you're at all interested we are talking about this wonderful work called Healing the Heart of Our Democracy, and it is um, like to what we're sharing in our sermon series this week, so we'd love to have you join us. Our women's Bible study continues on Tuesday uh, afternoons from 1230 to 2. If you're interested, please don't hesitate to give a call, ask any questions, or just show up. As we um, consider the hurricane impacts of the past week, we are offering a, a number of ways of helping. And one is you can directly contribute to um, hurricane relief, and you can send a check to the church and put in the memo hurricane relief. And as I said earlier, 100% of what comes through our denominations goes directly to um, the hurricane relief. We also have this opportunity. Um, Amy uh, Schrader, who went last year to Kenya, is going again this year in January. And um, her mission trip group is having a fundraiser at Culver's on Monday, October 21st from 5 to 8, where a portion of the sales will be donated to their mission team. So if you'd like to support that, please uh, make note of that. Finally, our tithes and offerings are what support our ministry, and every year we um, share where we're at as we need to close the gap. And so thank you for your support, and we are now um, needing to close $99,080 by December 31st. So thank you again for your support. And now I'd like to welcome Kurt one more time to offer us these words of benediction. And so, friends, for now, as the worship concludes and the service begins, I offer you this blessing. May the Holy One show you the way to do unto others with humility. May the Christ whose light is the center of all that is ground you in the assurance that no one is outside of love. May the Spirit show forth through you an extraordinary acts you never imagined you had the power to achieve. And may you know the peace that surpasses all understanding, especially when it is so difficult to understand. May it be so. Amen.